in Zionum Beis, the last two lines. Okay. Virchus Kohanim Ketzad. Virchus Kohanim. How would the Virchus, how did they do it? Now, we have three Psukhm of Virchus Kohanim. Yorach Shem Yishmerecho, right? Yoyer and Yiso. After each one, we say Amen, right? Because each one's a Bracha. But in the Beis Amigdosh, they said all three Psukhim continuous. Because in the Beis Amigdosh, they didn't answer Amen. The only reason why we interrupt from one to the next is because they say Amen after each one. But in the Beis Amigdosh, they didn't say Amen. So therefore, the Kohanim, when they said Virchus Kohanim, it was, they was started with the first word and then <coughs> ended with the last word, at, up at the end of the last Pasuk, okay? That's the Mishnah. Virchus Kohanim Ketz, at the Medina Omer Osa Shalosh Brochus. The three Psukim are divided into three, meaning they finish the first, and then the second, third, and so many. Ube Migdosh Brocha Achas. It was all three were said consecutive, continuously, without any interruption. So over here, if you take a look in Rashi, Bemigdash Brocha Achas, Fish Ein Onin Omin Bemigdash, since in the Migdash they didn't say, yes, they didn't say Omin, made Sarah Kanshum Hepsek, therefore there's no reason to interrupt the, the continuous saying of, of the words. If there, there is a reason to stop to answer Amin, so we say stop to say Amin. But in the Migdash that they don't answer Amin, because in the Migdash they don't say Baruch Shem Kol Malchus Olam Bed, that's what they would say. Okay? Migdash, bin Migdash Omei Sashem, Kichsovo. When they have the Sis Kapayim, the Duchen, the Snigdash, Yud Kei we don't pronounce it. We pronounce Yud Kei Vovke as Adni, as if it would be said with Allah Dalaf Nun Yud. In the, in the base Migdash they pronounce it according to its proper pronunciation, Yud Kei Vovke. Ubim Dina Bechinu Kini means like in its in its uh, reference as a re re we refers to something else. We Yudke Vavke we pronounce as if it's Adni, as if it be spelled differently. The Medina Koanim Nosim Sidem Kinegd Kasfeim. Here, when the Koanim they Duchen had Koanim, he extends his hand horizontally, right at shoulder height. The Migdash Al Gabi Roshein. When they were Duchen, the hands would be like this. This is the way they would. That's the way they were talking the Kohanim. Why? And it brings a posuk. Chutz mi Kohen Godel. Except the Kohen Godel was not permitted. Why? She'enu magbiyas yodu v'lamala min atzitz. On his forehead he wore it sits. It said Kodesh Lashem. Raising your hand above that would be a disrespect. I mean, there's something above, above the Yudke Lashem. Therefore, he would, when he would do it, it would only be shoulder height. He would not lift his hands above his, above his forehead. But the ordinary Kohanim who have the four vestments, they don't have the tzitz. So when they would do it, it would be, the hands would be lifted. Reb Yudomer, what? Turn back up at this moment. With the Amen, they didn't say Amen at all? No, no, uh, nothing, not never. Not particular. No, ever, they never answered Amen. It's based on Psukim. There's no Amen said in the base of Migdosh. So what did they say at the end? Baruch Shem Fod Malchus Salam Whenever we would say Amen, they would say... N no, no, yeah. no. It, no, when it would, whatever it was, it was completed, they say Baruch Shem Fod Malchus Salam Okay? Reb Yudomer says, No, Afko and Godel Magbiyot of Lamar Lebin Outseats. He says, no, since it's within context of Nisis Kabayim V'duchning, even the Kohen Godel, although his hand is going above Kodesh Lashem, why it's based on the Posuk Shenemar, it says in the Posuk, Vayisa Aaron es Yodov Elo Om Vayivorchim, it says Vayiso, he lifted up his hands, so it seems to be it was above his head, so it's so only because of what, of that Posuk, that's why normally you would say logically we wouldn't, but we have a Posuk which supports that you can, but the Tanakhama says what, no, Tanakama says, the co every, every coin yes, the coin got all not. Toner mm -hmm. Okay? Learn the Brysa. Kosevorchu. Kosevorchu. Now, Berch's Ber Quantum is one of the things that could only be said in Loshan HaKodesh, only in Hebrew. Right? The mission before listed certain things are only Hebrew, other things could be in, in, in any language. Not English, any language. Any language. Okay? Even gibberish, right? Even gibberish. Expert. Gibberish. Okay. <laughs> okay. Kosev Orchu Beloshan Hakodesh. It says, as this you should bless them. Ko means as this. Ato Ome Beloshan Hakodesh. Does it mean only in Hebrew? Oeno Elo Becholoshan. Maybe, maybe you could say Birchuswan in any language. Nemer Kant Kosev Orchu. It says Kosev Orchu by Birchus Kohanim. Ben Nemal Alon regarding the blessings and the curses by Harevol Hargrizim. Elu Yamdu Levorech Hasom. Right? It says, Elu Yamdu Levorech Hasam, 
just as over there was only in Loshna Kodesh. I've come to Loshna Kodesh. If you don't mean it, sir, you don't have to come to this 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 gzeri, this gzeri shava because varchu kevarchu. You don't need it. Hari Omer ko sevarchu ko. What is ko? As in the Torah, how does Berachos Kohen written what language? In Loshna Kodesh. So it says ko as this. As like this, so it's yeah. like this, the text that you have in the Torah. So we don't have to look elsewhere to understand why it should be Loshan HaKodesh. Okay? At Shiyom Rav Loshan it should be said in this, this language. Tanya, Yidoch, we learn another Brai, so. Kosevorchu. Bamido. The Kohen, when he says, he has to stand. He has to be, we'll see, you know, certain things. But the evidence, if you sit, it's okay. Let's say Kohen is not able to stand. He's not qualified to say Birchus Kohen. He has to stand. What happens if a Kohen wants to officiate in the base of Migdash sitting? It's not valid. Because the Mordor is going to learn this from officiating in the base of Migdash. We'll see in a moment. It's Bamido. Bamido. I told me Bamido. Elo. I feel Bishib. Maybe it could. Maybe Yechus Kana could even be said in a sitting position. Nemakad Kosovar. Vinemel Alon. Elu Yamdu Lavorech. Right? They will stand to bless. So it says explicitly Yamdu. Malalun Bamido Afkan Bamido. That's the basis. Rab Nos no mer ain't it's orich. Similar to what Rabbi said before. You don't need that. You don't have to learn a Xer Shava. As over there it's Bamido, here it's Bamido. Hari Ome Lishor So. It says to officiate. It says Lishor So Ulavorik Vishmo. It's to officiate and to bless in his name. Kohen, what does he do? He's Bisharis. That's the Avodo. Ulavorik Vishmo. Ma Mishoris Bamido. Mishoris when you officiate. It's ex explicit in the post, so it has to be um, it has to be in a standing position. And Torah says, uh, what is the function of the Kohen? L'shor so, u'levorich. So just as l'shor so, when you officiate, it has to be standing. Mm -hmm. Identically, when you say the bracha, it has to be standing. Av'levorich ba'amida, u'mishor is kufman. Where do we see when you officiate? The Kohen does the zriko, or the kabbalah. How do we know he has to be standing? The chesiv la'mod l'shor is. It says in the post, Torah explicitly, he stands and he officiates. Tanya Yidoch, another Brisa. Kosev Orchu. Benesis How do you know the coin has to lift his hands, even shoulder height? Maybe he could have his hands down. When you go to Esper Zabrach, he picks up, he has to lift his hands. Verbally, he has to say the Brocha. Who's who? Yeah, just close the door. Oh, there's noise. The door's open, it's... Who's in there? Who's in there? So what? Okay, well, where is it? Yeah, but he's disturbing us. I didn't say anything. Oh. Okay. Okay. Howard's presence frozen. Just his <laughs> presence. Okay. Because you're standing behind me. Tanya Yidoch. Does it have to be with the hands uplifted? So it says it means it has to be. It's in halacha, it's side in Hilchos. Let's say a coin is an old person and he just can't lift his hands, can't keep him raised. But what about, it speaks of case, you lift his hands and you put like a sport under it. So really he's not naturally lifting his hands. His hands are lifted, it's not valid. He has to naturally be able to keep his hands up. If they're propped up, it's not a valid. It's not valid. It's not a valid deceased uh, kapayim. It's, it's, it's integral to to Yechus Kohanim. His hands have to be naturally, he has to raise them. Nemer kant kosevorchu v'nemel alon vayisa aron es yodov el om vayivorchim. So what is, what is the profile of Yechus Kohanim? It says vayisa aron es yodov. He lifted his hands. Ma'ala halom deceased kapayim. Just as Aaron, when he said Birchus Kohanim, <coughs> it was with the Sis Kapayim with the hands lifted. Avkam Sis Kapayim. Kashla Reb So, if we're learning from Aaron, we have a problem. So, it says, as maybe we should learn from the Xerishov. As over there, he was a coin Godol. Maybe the one who says Birchus Kohanim is only a coin Godol. Right? Because we're seeing that the Sis Kapayim is integral to what Birchus Kohanim. And we learn it from Aaron. And because it says, Levorchim. He says, Vayivorich. So maybe the seas come only as if you're coin gold, there's a mitzvah to, to be mvorek. A ordinary coin has no mitzvah. He's no different than an ordinary Jew. That's his question. Kashli Rabbi Yonah said, Ima alon coin gold, Virosh Chodesh, Bavodis Tibur. In what context did he do it? 
it was Rosh Chodesh, and it was, he was bringing a carbon seaboard, a communal offering. <laughs> Within that context, after he brought the communal offering of Rosh Chodesh, he says, he blessed him. Afka, maybe for Birchaz Kohen, Kohen Godel, Rosh Chodesh, Ravod, seaboard. It's only in that context, even the Kohen Godel has an obligation to bless them. But let's say if it's not Rosh Chodesh, it's not a carbon seaboard, he just puts a Bevorech, he, he, no, he has no obligation. Rav Omer, what? No obligation to bless, no obligation to No, to bless, to period. Bless, bless, period. Maybe the Kos of Archu is only if you're Kohen Godel and only if you're Shkodesh and you're participating in the Korban Seabor. Mm-hmm. But if any of that, if those, those components are not there, there is no Mitzvah of Birchus Kohanim. No, no, no. We were saying. Right up. Reb Nosen Omer, Eino Tzorich. Hari Omer, Hu Bonov. It says you don't need the Pasuk. If you learned the Xer Shova, you have this, this issue. Maybe it's only the Kohen Godel. He's, but you don't need that. Rav Nosen says, "Einu tzorich." Hari Omer. It says, "Hu vonov kolayim." It says, "He and his children all their lives." It says, "So the Torah is what is equating his children to him." Makish vonov the mahu b'nisis kapayim. Just as out with the Kohen Gadol when he blesses, he says the bracha. It's b'nisis kapayim. A vonov b'nisis kapayim. So how do we know an ordinary Kohen has a mitzvah b'nisis kapayim? The, the ordinary coin does it exactly as the coin Godel does it. And just as the ordinary coin mm-hmm. has no relevance to carbon seaboard necessarily, or Rosh Chodesh, Uchsiv, Kol Hayomim. Yeah? It says, Kol Hayomim, Yiskish Brocho, Lishayr says, we said earlier. How do we know it has to be standing? Okay. The time Yidich, we have another Braisa. Kol Sevorch is B'nai Yisroel, B'Shem HaMaforosh. Meaning, you say the Yudke Vovke based on its pronunciation. Okay, with its vows. At home, Bishem Porsche, Oeno, Elo, Bikinu, maybe not. Kosovo means, because it's Yudke Vov, maybe, as we would normally pronounce Yudke Vov, K. Tamad Loma, Ush, Vesomu, Eshmi. And you should put my name, Shmi, I'm Yuchadli. Wait a minute, what does the name mean? The, the name in its, in its correct pronunciation. So what's the correct number? But that's, that's the Shem of Forosh. Yochaf, Bikvulin, it's the same, it's a Birchus Koanim, correct? So if, if we're saying it's Vesomu, Shmi, so even the Gvulan, even outside the base of Migdash, you should, when you have Birch's Kwanim, <coughs> it has to be according to his pronunciation. Yeah. Nemar Khan Vesome Shmi, Nemar Lan Losome Shmi. It says regarding the Mishka on Losome Shmi, Ma Lalon Besa Bechiro, just when it says Losome Shmi, it's referring to the base of Migdash. Afkan the base of Bechiro, same thing, when do you have to pronounce it? As it's written, not as it's pronounced, only in the base of Migdash. In the base of Migdash, when they s- said Birchus Kohanim, it was according to its correct pronunciation. Outside the base of Migdash, we, we deal with it as we normally say the name Hashem. It's not based on its the vowels of the of the letters. Rabbi Yosho Meinu Tzorach, he says it's not necessary. Hari Omer Bechol Moksha Askish Mi Ovo Ilechem Yeah, it says wherever my na- my name will be uh, pronounced. Right? I will come and bless you. Someone says, Bechom Okom Sogotaitach. Anywhere. Elo Mikra Zemesuras. So you have to like rearrange the words. Bechom Okom Asher Ovo Eilecho Uverachticho. Here. When I come to you wherever you may be and I bless you, Shom Asker Shmi. Vehechon Ovo Eilecho Uverachticho. Where does Hashem say, I'm coming to you? The location of the Shechina. I will come to you Uverachticho. Vesabchiro. Shom Askerishmi. That's where my name will be mentioned. The Bisabhir is only there, not big ruling. Tanyidoch. Really, we'll get mileage on Kosovarhu here. Another Kosovarhu has been a Yisrael. Ainly El Bene Yisrael Gerim Noshva Bodm Shikhorim Minayin. Right? You're blessing Bene Yisrael. What about Ger Ger is not he's, he may be a Jew, but he's not Bene Yisrael. Right? Where are women? It says Bene. Bene normally means males. No males. Avod b'shukrorim, an emancipated slave is the equivalent of what of a mm-hmm. of a ger. Tamad loma emor lohem lekulu, whoever as long as they're Jews, male, female, regardless of what their origin of pedigree is, it's irrelevant. Lohem, as long as they're Jews, emor lohem, you should say the birchus kohanim. What does that have to tell me this? What does that have to tell me this? So for two reasons, the mishnah, the gemara says in Rosh Hashanah. That the Birchus book, Birchus Kohanim is when a coin comes upon it, Sibor, who he didn't bless, he has an obligation to bless yeah. them. So let's say it's, it's a Sibor of Gerim. 
Right? He has to bless them. Right? Okay. Women. Good. He should bless them. Doesn't make a difference. Same thing. Mamzerim or Bnei Yisrael. They are Bnei Yisrael. That was not a question. But like this. What happens? And th this, is, this is very important because it's ignorance. Let's say a person is at, at, on Yom Tif, in the Chutzlarts, we have Birchus Kohanim. And the person, he doesn't want to look at the Kohanim, which is the custom not to look at the Kohen. And he turns his back to the Kohen. Oh, you were a recipient of the Bracha. No. You're not. Of course, it has to be face, they have to face one another. So you say, <coughs> make it, so as a result, it's, it's, it's really giving me mevatil, the person turns, he's mevatil the mitzvah of receiving the bracha from the Kohen. So it's, an, it's a Torah violation. Mm -hmm. It's a Torah violation. So we said a question, what about a woman who would turn her back? If she faces good, she's getting a bracha. What if she would turn her back? Mm -hmm. it matter, no, just the opposite. If we go only B'nai Yisrael, it's the men, it's not the women. Right. But Emor Lohem means even the, the women. So the, okay. So even if the woman turns, it's, she's Mavatlam Mitzvah She's not going to be a recipient of the brocha. Okay. It's interesting. Howard could smile the one way or smile the other way. Same thing. It's <laughs> always learning something new. I love it. Okay. Tanya Yidach. Learn the Braisa. Kosevorchu. Ponim kinegin ponim. Mean face to face. Face to face. Is that right? That's what ponim el ponim means. Kohanim kinegin ponim. The Kohanim have to face the Tzibor, and the Tzibor has to face the Kohanim. I told me ponim kinegin ponim. El ponim kinegin oref. Maybe what? They can even face your your neck. You're turning around. They say they see your neck. Oref. Like you get it in the neck. You ever get it in the neck? Okay. When you speak to a person, do you speak to him when his back is turned to you? You speak to him as face to face. It says, As one person speaks to another. You speak to another person, you speak face to face. So identically, is Only in that context. It has to be not just at an ordinary level, it has to be loud. Oh, and, uh, uh, maybe you could even say it in an undertone, in a whisper. Yes. When two people speak, I mean, does a person have to go like this, bend his ear to be able to hear the other person speaking? Right. So if he does, it's, it, it's not sufficient. Good. We're not talking about what a person has to hear, it's hard of hearing. So he goes like yeah. that even when it's loud. But the way people speak to one another. Now, what's interesting, it's cited in halacha. Let's say a person has a very raspy voice. People get older, they get red, and they can't, yeah. they can't raise their voice. It is going, doesn't do it. Does not do it. You know, it's interesting. The halach is when they, an when they answer, say, Kohanim, a Kohen has a chiv to go up, a Torah obligation. You know, that's why they answer, say, Kohanim. They go up. If he doesn't go up, it's a, it's a bitl mitzvah to say. He's nullifying a, mitzvah, an ob a Torah obligation. What about he's, he can't hold his hands straight out? He's not, no, he doesn't have to walk out. He's not obligated to go up. Right, but he's a, if he's part of the seabird, he will say, so I have to go up. So wouldn't it be better to walk out? It's for a different reason. I'm okay. saying, I'm talking, we're talking on a Torah level here. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. The person has to do his bodily functions, he walks out okay. too, right? right? Okay, good. So a, per, a person who stick, can't raise his hands, doesn't, he has no chief to go up. A person has a raspy voice, he can't raise his voice that loud. Yeah. He doesn't go up. Doesn't go up because again, it's yeah, rum. He's not. He's not a rum person. Very simple. It's the same as somebody can't stand. It's like a person can't stand. He doesn't go up, right? So I would say if he's in the wheelchair, you wheel him out, right? Right. Okay, but you don't push him off the, the plank. Coward. Okay. I'm not an Arab terrorist. Okay. <laughs> okay. See, maybe he should go out his halacha that if you have a coin in, in the tzibur. And um, why don't you give a levy before a Kohen? So you say whatever it may be. Because, he, because people say the other person is not really a Kohen. It's not a Kohen. Mm -hmm. So it's mutsi laz. You're, you, there can be murmurings, you know. Maybe he's, a, he's an illegitimate Kohen. Maybe mm -hmm. his mother was a divorcee. Right? So if you don't call the Kohen up. Kohen gets a levy. You know, you have yeah. enough alias. Right? Somebody, They're doing a Somebody's, he should walk out. Besides them doing the wrong thing, because what are people going to say if he's here? They don't give him the alia. What are they going to say? <coughs> they say he's a, they, they can say he's not, he's not a valid coin, right? That's the reason why, when, if you call a coin, 
and um, then he's not there. You call somebody in his place. You don't, you don't <coughs> call the sent coin by his name. <coughs> why don't you call a sent coin by his name? Because people say, you know, why do you go? Because they realize now the first coin was the real coin. They don't know he's not here. They say because he's not a real <coughs> coin. But let's see, it would be a Yisrael or a Levi. It doesn't make a difference. Because mm -hmm. the whole idea of not being legitimate, you're a, you're a Jew or a Jew. <coughs> Nobody's going to suspect you're not a Jew. <coughs> you call the person to replace, let's see, you could call it be Yisrael for an Aliyah. It's not there. So when you call the person, you go him by his name. There's no reason not to go him by his name. Because what are you going to say? The first one wasn't, wasn't a Jew, he's a Jew. Mm -hmm. But regarding Cohen, when the <coughs> another coin takes his place, you don't call the second coin by his name. Mm. Let people think it's, this is the Cohen going to take the Aliyah. Because if you call him by his name, that means one, one, the first coin come take his Aliyah. Evidently, maybe the last moment they found out <coughs> he's not a real coin because his mother was a divorcee. Right? It's, it's Pagam. It's called Pagam Mishpoch. They're going to actually question the, his pedigree that he's not, he's not, a, he's not an authentic coin. So, this is a circumstance, sorry. A circumstance where someone is called the first coin by his name, but he just wasn't there. Is that what we're saying? And now you have to call. And there's so another you coin. Don't, you don't mention that coin's name. The second coin, you don't mention. Because if you do, because it, it, it's going to cause us to question who the first coin was. Why didn't he take the Aliyah? Because they'll say, people, what are people going to say? They say a lot of things. You know why? He probably they found that he's not a coin. That's the reason why he didn't take the Aliyah. <coughs> <coughs> right, same thing. I'm telling you. The same thing like no, Levi, no, because it doesn't make a difference. Okay. I've seen this true like a crazy lady. And married these no rest. No, that's every. We're going to get. What? Did he divorce the, the Grusha? No. He's not permitted to marry Gioris. He's not permitted. But then he became religious. Well, is he still married to the Gioris? He's still married, so he's not allowed. You don't to give him an Ali. Because you're an Ali and he's No, he's, he's not a... Though. We don't deal with him like... He gets no privileges of Kohen. He's not a... But does he walk out there and do Kohen? No, he won't. Well, he, he, no, I understand that I'm talking about. We don't treat way. him as a Kohen. He's no longer a Kohen, so you don't yeah. walk out. You're not considered... If he doesn't want to be embarrassed, he should, he should walk he out. He should walk out. You lose your staff. But the woman is converted to him. No, 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 no. Cohen's no. not permitted to marry a convert. Even if she converts before she three, she, she's three years old. Even as a newborn child, she doesn't make a difference. Well, even if she's with another man. Separate. Omer Abaye. Yeah, now, we call Kohanim, right? That summons the Cohen to come up. What about if you have one coin? Do you say coin? Or you say nothing? No, you say nothing. <coughs> if you have two coin, you say coin. Right? <coughs> one, maybe you say coin. Or maybe you shouldn't say anything. It's only coin or nothing. Okay? Om Rabbayi. You can have one coin. Om Rabbayi. Naktinan Lishnaim. We've learned. Kori Koanim. Yeah, two koanim, you call koanim. Le'echod inu kore, koanim. You don't say koanim. Shenemar, emor lohem. Who do you call? Them. What's them? Them is shnaim. One second. It's interesting. The different men hogim. You know, the way the... Conventional meaning is that the shli the Baal Tfila, the Shli Tzibah, he, he says, he says, then he says, the way the Mishnah verse says, the way to do it is, you start at Lokeinu Vakeinu Vaseinu, Rehidu Baruch Mishlesh is Torah, and when you come to Kohanim, he says, Kohanim. <coughs> so it's within the context of saying, <coughs> of saying that. Yeah. Others, they don't say it. They come to Toshim Cholono, they say, finish, Kohanim. It's not, it's not the optimum way to do it. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Right after you say Hatoshim Chono Elohodos, that's the Brachol Achayim, right? So that right at that point, you say Kohanim yeah. afterwards. No, no, that's the question. You say it immediately. Yeah. Well, what do you normally, let's say in the weekday, what do we say? Elokeinu Vakeinu Vaseinu Brachim Barocham Shuleshes Batora, Raksu Batora, right? Then we say Kohanim. Yeah. Then in that context, you say Kohanim. So if you say everything up to that, then say Kohanim, and then they start saying the Brachos Kohanim, the Kohanim. Well, no, you don't even start. You just say Kohanim. So he says the proper way to do it is you start Elokeinu Vakeinu Vaseinu. Baruchin Barucham Shlesh is Torah. That's the way to do it. Okay? So now, but others have a custom that the Shlesh doesn't call it out. They have somebody else calling it out. 
Mm-hmm. Like in Israel, they have somebody else will say Kohanim, mm-hmm. right? It's not the, shli- the right the way it's normally done. The ra- whoever does it. Yeah. From Rashi, you see clearly it's the Shlich Tzipor. Rashi says, "Who calls out Kohanim?" See Rashi, it's the shlich tzibur, it's the chazan, it's not somebody else. Calls out koanim, okay? Back to the issue where you call a koanim plural or singular. Is this maybe I don't understand? Are you coming from this? Most people are kind of zimur. Zimur. Zimur or minyan? Well, minyan. So there's a minyan. Yeah. I thought if there's one koanim present, you still say koanim. Is that not true? No, you say brushes a koanim. If there's one coin, you say Bruce Yeah, Bruce Even if it's, it's not 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 it's it's you're supposed to summon them. Right. If you don't summon them, they have no obligation to, to be worked at Sibor. If they're summoned to, to bless, then they have an ob- a Torah obligation to go. Based on the post, Emor Lohem. Homer of Chizna, Tina, Kohen, Korin, Kohanim. Who summons the Kohanim to call, come to Duchin? A Kohen. Then you saw Kori Kohanim. This we don't. This we definitely don't like, right? Shenemar, Emor Lohem. What is Emor Lohem? Amira Mishelahem. The calling should be from them. One of them should be the ones to do the calling. A second. Tei Vihilso. But what's the law? Kavoshi Dabaye. We rule like Abaye that what? That when you have two coins, you say Kohanim. When you have one coin, you say nothing. Right? You say nothing. The coin goes up himself in the Duchens. I mean, he starts himself. He's not, he doesn't wait for the, for the queue. He doesn't, doesn't wait for the queue, Kohanim. Mm-hmm. He knows. Immediately they wait, he starts saying Birchus Kohanim. For the Hilsa Kavoshi, the Rav But we don't rule the Rav Chizdo. Rav is only the coin summons the coin to Duchen. We rule, anybody could summon the coin to do it. I mean, the coin is permitted, but it's only him, no one else. That, that's, not cor- that's incorrect. Okay? What do we do with the Rashi? Rashi says, from Rashi, it says the Shlir Tzibur. Mm-hmm. Others, somebody else could, but who's the someone else? It could be anybody. Not a coin. Doesn't, it doesn't have to be a coin. It does not a coin. It could be a coin. It doesn't have to be a coin. Okay. What, what, what's the practice in Israel where um, if there's one coin, every so often there's small, often small minyanim on this, on this They don't call coin. They don't say anything. One singular coin, he just goes. He just starts. starts. Yeah. Omer Reb Shub and Levi, what? I'm just wondering how they know, because if you don't know if there's a coin present or not. You see how many people go up? The, the coin knows. He knows who to go up. He knows when he's supposed to go up, up. right? Do you know what they call one or not? Right. Omer Reb Shuvan Levi, Minayin she Kodesh Baruch Hu misavet Birchus Kohanim. Hear this? How do you know how Kodesh Baruch Hu desires Birchus Kohanim? Misavet, he has a desire for it. Shenemar v'somo Shmi al Bnei Yisrael v'ani avorchim. Hashem says, I want you to put my name upon the Bnei Yisrael and I'll bless them. Here. So over here, the Mishabur and Hilchus, this is kind of brings the Rambam that the Kohanim are only the kind who's actually blessing Klal Yisrael. Hashem. It's through the Kohen, Hashem, they're a conduit to it. Yeah? Hashem is Misavim. Where do we see it? Because it says, you should put my name upon me. So it's not the Kohen is blessing them. The Baruch is emanating from where? From Hashem. I will bless them. Hear this? The Kohen that blesses, he's blessed. He's blessed for blessing. Sheim mevorech, but if he doesn't, Eim is baruch. Shenemar, vavorecha mevorech, vavorecha mevorech. I will bless those who bless you. Right? Akosh baruch says tavro mevina. Right? I will bless. So therefore, so the kohen who blesses his Hashem's children, he he, he will be blessed. Vavorecha mevorech echo. Vam rib shuban levi. Kol kohen sheno leod leduchan. When he's summoned, he doesn't go up. Ovi b'shlosh asay. He's a violation. Three mitzvahs asay. Kosevarhu, Emor Lehem Vesomashmi. Rabba Machoshin Shem. Well, now, why? One second. Rab says, no, you know why it's a problem. Mar seems to be. Rab says, Choshin Shem Megrush Mechalutsu. You know why you should go up? Because the people are going to write away a suspect that watching out of legitimate coin. Why aren't you going up? Lopez says, Lo Pligi. Lo Pligi, there's no argument. Rab agrees, you're in violation of three mitzvahs, I say. Three. 
But in addition, when are they going to suspect that you're Megrusha Chalutza? Let's say the person Vilchens once in a while. Let's say you know this person's a, his father's a Kohen. And whenever they call Kohen, he never goes up to Dochen. What are they going to say? Evidently, he's illegitimate. But let's say sometimes he goes, sometimes he doesn't go. So what does that say? He can't be illegitimate because he goes sometimes. So, so there, what, if he doesn't go, he's a violation of three mitzvahs I say. The three psukim that we quoted. How the solid prokim, how the low solid prokim. Lom Reb Shub and Levi. Called Kohen Shein Ole Bavodo. A Kohen who is what doesn't, he could, he could officiate in the base of Migdi, he doesn't. Shub and Ole. He's not, we don't let him officiate any longer. If you're not opportune to and you turn it down, turn it down, you're out. Right? What happened? After he <coughs> officiated, he went down, right? From, from bringing, officiated with the chatos, the olo, and the shlomim. Malalom bavodo. Avkam bavodo. One second. No, no, I made a mistake. No, 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 no. When did the corn have to go up? When would the corn have to be up front at what? They have to be in movement going towards the front by what? When they stop saying Ritzay. The coin is sit, staying stationary in the back. Right? And, and they, they already started Ritzay. So can't do it any longer. Ritzay is the Avoda. Right? Bavodos, Bavodos of Ritzay. We're asking Hashem to accept our Avoda. Right? So that's it. There you go. He says, Kol Kohen Shino Ola, he doesn't begin ascending. When they say Ritzei, Shuvah, mm-hmm. he doesn't go up for Gibbos Khan. This way it's ruling Shulchan Aruch. That's the reason, the moment, that's why very often, if they, they slip so fast, the car, all the Khan are back from washing, they stop and they wait. Why do they stop and wait? Because if they continue, the Khan are coming afterwards, they can't go up to Duchen. Because they really have to be in movement towards the front when Ritzei when Ritze is being said. Okay? They know. Well, they know. So let's say you have let's have a tremendous number of kohanim. It takes a long time. Yeah. You have one washing sink, and you have one kohen. So it takes a wa- one lady. It takes a long time. So therefore, what happens? You have to wait because if you continue with the with the chazor sashats, and they walk in, and you already began ritzei, he can't. They can't go up to duchen. So therefore, you wait, and that's this. Kol kohen shen olah ba'avodah shuvei no olah shenema v'yisa aron is yolah elohim. So we see, it was after he completed completed officiating with the avoda. Just as over there, when did he say the berachos kohanim? It was associated with the avoda by Aaron. Avkan the avoda. Ini, for Ravami Ravasi. Yeah, Ravami Ravami Ravasi. They were both kohanim. They were kohanim. Salki Rebami Vravasi Mekoro. Salki, excuse me. Go up Rebami Salki. You see that they did go up, even though they finished Ritzei. They walked in before, after Ritzei. They went up to Duchen. They were Kohanim. So Mar says, no. Rebami Vravasi Mekoro Havi Akri Karayu. Mimoto, Mimto Lo Hamoto. What about the person left, he washed outside, and he's on his way? He does not be standing already up front. He, I would say. he has to be in motion going good, in that direction. Good, good, good. So therefore, even though they weren't there yet, but they're ready, we're going in that direction. That's what it says. Right? Ravami Ravasi Mikorahavi Akri Karayu. They already removed their feet going towards there. However, Mibdi Lo Havimoti, they didn't arrive yet. They didn't arrive, Hosam. So it's not a problem. Kirtan Raboshe, Loshon, Eloshto, Oka, Esraglov. When do you say that you can't, Dochin? Unless you were the associate with Avodah, that's only if you didn't start walking towards that location. But if he uprooted his feet, he started walking that direction, then he does. He goes up to Birchus Kahanim. Tanan Nami. Im after Choso, she knows his cap of Choso, the Philoso. Rashoi. Here. Let, let's say you have a Shlir Tzibur. And if he starts saying Birchus and he's the Shlir Tzibur and he's a coin, what do you do? That means the middle shmona has to turn around yeah, and, and say, "Bechus koanim." Yeah. Right? Somebody else is in call out. You brecha, right? Hashem, all that. So, but let's say 
if he has to interrupt the Shimon Esrei, in those days they daven by heart. So his thought, his thought process is, 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 is disrupted. So for time he can't, he can't continue. He shouldn't do it. Because if he dochens, he's not going to be able to continue. Right? right? It says, Im av tchoso shenos is kapa v'choze litfil also. If he's assured that when he dochens, he'll be able to return and complete the tefil Rashoi, then he's permitted to be the shleif. He's permitted to dochen. So the Mishmur says, today that we all dam from Sidurim, it's not a problem. So he, even middle, he knows he has to sit. He'll continue. It's not a problem. Vavinibo holo okar. Phenomenal question. If he's a shlich tzibor, he just turns around. But he has to walk towards. He has to walk towards the location. He's not walking. He's just turning around, <laughs> right? So he said, but so he says, I holo okar, elo de no purto. Yeah, he moved slightly. Meaning he was, let's say. He walked front, he walked back slightly. Or he walked slightly, even the, the corner was alongside of him, he walked slightly to be near them. Move, slight movement. What do you mean you have to oka right? You have to take a walk 20 paces? No. Even a small, a small step towards there, that's enough. Yeah, this. When you ask a person to bench on the coast, a person who's a tov ayin, he has a good eye. Shenema tov ayin yivorach. A person with a good eye, he should say, give the bracha. Because the person who benches on the cup, he's mavorich, he's, he's the mavorich. One second. So firstly, what's a tov ayin? How do you know? He says, soni botza. He despises anything which is illegal money. And they do chesed with their own money. You hear this? He despises anything illegal money. What, what's illegal money? That means <coughs> if a person has an ayin ra, that means he has envy. He has, he has bad eye on everybody. That means he feels what the other person should be his. Right? But a person is so betza. Anything that it's not, he has no right to, he doesn't want it. That person is, is a tovayin. Mm-hmm. It's not, he doesn't, he doesn't want it because he's doing the wrong thing. No, he doesn't want it because it's wrong. He appreciates the wrongness. So therefore, there's not even a basis for envy. Good. It's like certain people, they, they, they truly, they see other people have, they say, I wish them well. I'm happy for them. And they really mean it. They are happy for the other person. That's a tovayin. But if a person only wishes he has what the other person has, mm-hmm. understand, it, it's at best it's lip service. When he says, I'm happy for the other guy. But I would have been happier if it would have been by me, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are different kinds of people. And I have a rule of thumb. <coughs> you know, a person comes to you and says, uh, he hardly knows you. Uh, so how many ch- children do you have? How many grandchildren do you have? What are we we're going to do a shidduch? What are we asking these kinds of questions? You know? And, and, how, and, and how many bedrooms do you have in your house? What are asking these questions? It already it smacks of what? Of design horror. This person, you don't say anything. You say, look, it's all irrelevant. You're probably, you're talking to the wrong guy here. Go find somebody else. Seriously. It's a red flag, race very high. It's like the flag at half-mast. Yeah. Tov ayin yivoroch ki nosi milach miladal. Hear this? The tov ayin yivoroch because he gave of his bread to the to the impoverished, to the poor. Al tikre yivoroch elo yivorech. Hear this? Yivoroch means he should be blessed. It should be read. He should bless because a person with a good eye, you want his blessing because he really means he means to give you a bracha. Even a bird. A bird recognizes a guy who's a cheap son of a gun. You hear this? You say he's for the birds. Yeah, that's about it. Shenemar, Kichina Mizora Hareshes, Be'ene Kol Balkonov. You hear this? Now, how do you trap birds? You, you have a net and you put seed in it. That's how you bait the birds. They come, they don't realize there's a net. They go in, and then they're trapped. Kichina mazore hareshes, be'enikob balkonov. 
If a person puts seed there generously, that's when they, 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 they gravitate. What's that? You see a few seeds thrown. No, this guy's a chill. What's that? We're staying away from this. <laughs> that means he's only putting enough there to get us in, in, in the door. He says, Leomine Mashma, Bittori Ayin, this Arvaludom, Kolhonio, Kichino Mazora, Regis, Loshin Yizora, Al Nove Gofris, Kach Darkam Shel Tsaidonim. He says, a person's a, tra- a bird trapper. Lizros Chitim, Usorim, Berishtam. They see their nets with, with grain, with barley and wheat. Kedeshivo, Ophos, Lechel, Veilu Tsori Ayin, Chino Maabdin, Mizonos, Shazure, Berishtam, Veni Kobal Konov. Yeah, he said the people sorry I am, they're wasting their seed. You know why? Because the bird sense it belongs to somebody who has a bad eye. Not that because he puts less seed, he puts the same amount. But they're able to they stay away from that net. So the the, the cheap the guy with the bad eye he wasted the seed because no birds coming near there. Yeah. If you benefit from a person sarayin, you're in violation of a law. Shenemar al tilochim es lechem al tilcham es lechem ra ayin. You should not eat the bread of a bad a person has a bad eye. Ki kamo shar benafsho ken och achol ushay yomaloch. Second. Okay, stop here. Okay.